Welcome to the Edge Insider Podcast. Welcome back to the Edge Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Kellyanne Roberts, and I'm joined by the Edge Point Guard, Junior Kadugan. Junior, coming off a hard road trip, 4-0, or four losses on the road, but then two big wins at home. What was it like to get those wins under your belt coming home? I mean, it's always good to... uh you know, come home and get some home cooking. You know, we got the best fans uh, in the league. And, you know, we just been on the road for like 20 out of like 25 days. We are tired, you know. That's not an excuse, but like, you know, it's always good to be home, be home in front of the fans, have practices, you know, the whole the whole thing. On the road, walk us through it a little bit. I mean, that's got to be a hard few bus rides, you know, loss after loss, hoping that the next one, you know, you're going to have figured it out. Seemed like you guys had against Sudbury there. What happened? Uh, the Sudbury game was like a weird game. You know, we had seven players. Some players were ill. Some players uh, were feeling aches and pain. So, you know, we had seven players and we, we were shorthanded. We didn't have a big baby. You know, we didn't have no presence inside. So we really had to battle. And down the stretch, they, you know, shot a bunch of free throws and stuff. And, you know, they came back in the game. And, you know, we just didn't execute well in the end. And they came out with the win. And that was the last game of our road trip, you know. So it was tough. Hard to end it on that note. I guess I guess lessons learned from that, though, coming home. Big win, twenty po- more than 20 points. I guess definitely what the team needed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, we had a, a great day of, you know, Great couple of days of practice. You know, we had to tweak a couple of things and, you know, shorten on the court now. So, you know, we know what we have to do. We just have to go out and execute the plan that, you know, Doug Plum's given us and you will see great results. To be home for the month of March here, how much of a difference does that make for the team, especially with playoffs around the corner? Oh, it's great. You know, we, we, could, we actually get to practice. When we were on that road trip, we never practiced for a month, so we were we were on the go, and we were getting new players, and the new players had to learn on the go and stuff like that. You know, it's it's a it's a part of the the professional the professional thing, but at the same time, that's gonna that road trip's gonna help us in the long run in the playoffs. You know, when we're on the road in the playoffs, we we already been through adversity already, so you know that's gonna help us do what we got to do to get those wins on the road. You've got a pretty veteran roster here. A lot of guys with a lot of experience, you being one of them, having played a few seasons over in Europe. What do you bring to this team that I guess is a bit different than those other veterans? You know, I bring experience. I bring leadership. I bring toughness. You know, everything like that a point guard or a quarterback has to do. You know, I have to be stable, mentally stable to make sure my guys are, you know, ready to uh, fight battle and, you know, prepare my guys if if they don't know something on the scouting report, help them out. You know, just a leadership standpoint, you know, that's why I'm here. And, you know, I'm happy to have some young guys around me so I can mentor them and tell them what I've been through and, you know, stuff like that. Your playing career is pretty interesting. I'm going to take it all the way back to high school here, though, being from Toronto. Um, didn't finish out high school in Toronto, though. Walk us through that a little bit. Where'd you go and who'd you play with? Because I know there's a few guys on the team that you did play high school ball with. So I started off high school at Eastern Commerce in, uh, I, I did ninth grade. And then I seen opportunity in the States because at that time, basketball wasn't that big. And I was also playing on the AU circuit with Olo Ashlu, which is who's on our team now. And we were playing AAU like back and forth, like on the weekends uh, to the States. And, you know, we got a lot of recognition and you know, when we went through the circuit, we were like one of the top players in our classes. So we're like, you know, what if we compete in the U.S.? Like it would be big for us. So, you know, after grade nine, I decided to go to a school in Atlanta with Olu Ashalu. So we were there from we were young. And and then we left there and went to school in Houston with DeAndre Jordan, that place where the Dallas, no, New York Knicks right now. And, uh, you know, that experience was great because we got to play against the top American players and you know got the experience so by the time we got to college we were ready and then going into college I mean funny enough that it is March here now and that's got a lot of significance for your NCAA career um, being with Marquette and then walk us through that because 2012 was massive but 2013 was even bigger so you know for those who don't understand here March Madness in the States it's it's huge big NCAA tournament but then 
your team did something really remarkable in 2013. What was it like to be a part of that and make it to the Sweet 16? I mean, you know, from since I got to Marquette, you know, my freshman year, I got to learn from guys like Jimmy Butler and Lazar Haywood. And then my sophomore year, I had Drake, Jay Crowder. And then my junior uh, my junior year, I had guys like uh, Crowder, Vander Blue, Darius Johnson Odom, you know, a couple of NBA guys. It was a great experience. And then my senior year, you know, that's when it was time for me to step up as a leader. And we were uh, Big East. Uh, so Big East is like uh, the conference I was playing in in college. That was the top. Co- that was the co- top conference in college when I was there with teams like Syracuse, Georgetown, Louisville, uh, Seton Hall, uh, you know, all the, most of the top teams in the nation. And we end up being regular season Big East championships, and we took that onto the tournament, and we went to the Elite Eight one game away from the Final Four, and it was a great experience. Walk us through that atmosphere. I mean, for a lot of people that don't know, you start out with 64 teams, and it slowly works its way down. Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four. It's massive, and, you know, it's it's big on TV down there. It's starting to catch up a little bit up here, but what's it like to walk into an arena that's completely sold out? There's not a single empty seat, and everyone's wearing a jersey of one team or the other. Well, you said there's 64 teams, so you have two games every week. So you have a game Friday, Saturday, no, Friday, Sunday, or Thursday, Saturday, and basically it's do or die, and, you know, you have an opportunity to advance and make history for your college so you have two games like I said and you have to be locked in ready to go because you're going against the top the top 64 teams in the in the nation right so uh, my team was fortunate to make it to the third round you know like I said one game to the final four and the atmosphere was crazy you got NBA scouts there you have European scouts there you got NBA coaches there it's just like other than the NBA, it's the highest level, you know, and uh, for us to make it to the Elite Eight was a big accomplishment. Is there anything to equate it to for up here in Canada? I know a lot of people are now catching on to March Madness down in the States, but it, there's just nothing that seems to be quite the same north of the border. Well, I don't know. Newfoundlanders, they know about hockey, right? So, like, it's called the Ice Four or... Uh, That's in the States, too. That's Frozen oh, Fours in the uh, States. Uh, Maybe. Oh, I got something. So you could compare it to the world championships of, like, hockey. Team Canada playing. I, I think the world championships was in Toronto a couple years ago when we won the gold medal. It's that big of a deal in the States. So, like, for people that don't know out there, watch March Madness because that's the biggest thing that's going on in March. Massive, massive crowds. I mean, tailgating's massive. It's all big. But then the rest of your playing career was also really big. You, you've represented Canada several times here and in your hometown for the Pan American Games. Um, what was it like going home and, and wearing the Maple Leaf? Well, that was like one of the greatest things in my career, you know. And I and also Carl English was on that team. Um, you know, we got to compete and represent our country in Toronto, in Canada. It was a big deal. Um, you know, we went and won the silver medal. We should have won gold, but we won the silver medal. That's still a big accomplishment. Um, I don't think Canada has that much medal. So for, for me and Carl English to be a part of that is is very big in Canadian history. The Edge Insider Podcast. We'll be right back. Your St. John's Edge are turning up March Madness. Celebrate St. Patty's Day in a whole new way this Sunday when the St. John's Edge play the St. John Riptide. First 500 fans through the door get a limited edition St. John's Edge St. Patty's Day t-shirt. Sunday's tip-off is 2 p.m. Tickets at Mile One Center box office by calling 576-7657 or online at mileonecenter.com. Your St. John's Edge versus the St. John Riptide. Sunday at 2 at Mile One center welcome back to the edge insider podcast yeah on toronto here a little bit seeing the way that the game has evolved there alone i mean the raptors now 
everywhere you go, you're seeing their highlights, and you know that they're a really competitive team, and, and they've got a good shot at, at going quite far, if not all the way this year. What's it like to, to be able to see the game progress as much as it has there? I mean, it's kind of crazy because when I started off playing for Team Canada, uh, Junior Nationals, no one knew about Canada basketball, and I kept on telling the American guys that, you know, one day it's going to be up and coming, and we got a lot of players. They just don't have the recognition, you know? So, you know, uh, as I got older, these kids, like, it sounds crazy, but I started, like, from leaving high school and going to prep school. Like, Olu was there, but no one really knew about Olu. You know, he just went, you know what I'm saying? So when I was at Eastern Commerce, like, I had a great freshman season, and, you know, a lot of people got to know me. And then when I went to the States and had a successful prep career, a lot of these kids followed, and now, look, all these kids are leaving high school and going to prep school for better opportunities. So, you know, uh, for me to be a, a pioneer and the kids looking up to me and knowing that I started that, it, it was, it's a big deal. Your game also took you overseas. Speak about that experience a bit and, and what that's done for your career because, you know, not the NBA, but still an extremely high competitive level of basketball. So when I came out of when I when I came out of college, uh, Marquette, I got an opportunity to play summer league with the Milwaukee Bucks, and you know I had to work hard, but like I didn't really get an opportunity. But they seen I was working hard, and they seen I had I had a chance and I had potential. So, you know, I got invited to training camp, and you know, uh, you know, I signed my contract, and everything was going well, and then. The government shut down, and I found out I had the wrong visa. So, unfortunately, I, I got cut, like, on media day, you know, of the Milwaukee Bucks training camp. So, you know, that was a lesson learned. And, you know, you just got to not give up in life. You know, you're going to be go through ups and downs. And, you know, once I got cut from the Milwaukee Bucks, I just decided to go overseas because, you know, I needed the money for my family and stuff like that. And, you know, it was a great experience because I got to go to the Republic of Georgia you know, see places like that that I never thought I'll see. And I got an opportunity to play in Italy, top league, Greece. And then, uh, you know, I decided to come back home and, you know, build a foundation here in the NBL. Speaking about your family there, you have a very athletic, competitive family, I guess. What do they think about your career? And I guess, how are their careers taken off? Um, you know, my brother, he played at Humber College. He had a good career at Humber College. You know, I looked up to him. You know, he started me. He He's the one that started playing basketball, and I was just watching him playing basketball, following him everywhere. And, uh, you know, his career went well. He he won a, a OCCAA championship, and, you know, I'm happy for him. Unfortunately, he didn't get to play uh, high major uh, Division One basketball for, in college, but, you know, he still, you know, had the drive and, and, and the work ethic to, you know, go to Humber College and do his thing. So, you know, I'm, I was living his dream, you know, through me. So it was, it was great for my family. And when you got to go home and, and play for the London Lightning there, I guess a better chance for them to come out and watch a bit more? Yeah, so when I decided to come back home for the London Lightning, you know, I just had my, uh, you know, my heart set there. It was it was great for me to be home because I left when I was 15. And, you know, for a league to be in Canada where I could play professional and make money and, you know, potentially bring more Canadian players here, like a pioneer again. So, like, it was, it was great. And, you know, this league is only going up and... Uh, you know, I won a championship there. You know, we set records there. We we worked hard. I think we had like five losses through the whole year. You know, and uh, I was building from there. And uh, I I stayed there last year. I, I I played there last year, but it didn't really go how it was supposed to go. You know, I had a little injury that so I had to take a year off. And I'm just happy to be in St. John now. You know, we're doing it the right way. It's highly professional. You know. You know, we got trainers, we got weight coaches, we got, uh, you know, everything to make a, for a professional feel good, you know. So me being here, I would love to bring a championship here. Another familiar face from the London Lightning to the St. John's Edge was head coach, well, now head coach, Doug Plum, I guess. Was that part of the reason coming to St. John's? Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. And my bigger brother, Carl. But, you know, Doug Plum, I seen him when he was assistant coach. You know, he's a hard worker and. You know, I seen him, like, not getting sleep, cutting up film, you know, 
three three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. And you know, I love to be around people that you know work hard. And uh, Carl told me it was a a great opportunity here in St. John, and you know, Doug was here, so put the pieces together, you know, and we decided to come here and you know try win a championship here. What is that relationship like with Carl? You just spoke to him as like a brother, I guess. Is that only growing more since arriving in St. John's? Yeah. So when I was like 14, 15, while I was, you know, getting all that hype and stuff, you know, Carl was already on the senior men's team. And, you know, at those times I was in training camp with him, like doing workouts with him and stuff like that. And I heard about him like a long time ago. And like for a guy with a successful career like that, you know, and he's a hard worker, there's like, why wouldn't you want to be around a person like that? You know, he still gives me pointers and stuff like that. So, like, for me, being here in his hometown, like, it's it's great, man. It's, it's great to be a part of it. The chemistry on this team clearly runs very deep. What is the mood in the room like, I guess, this month, you know, knowing that you've got this stretch just before playoffs? I mean, I feel very comfortable because, like, most of the guys on this team I know, and they're also Canadian. And, you know, it's it's great that, Right now we have like the top, a lot of the top tier Canadians come to this league and, you know, come to St. John Edge where, you know, it's one of the best organizations in the league. So like for me, having my brothers here and having an opportunity to win a championship with them on on a professional level is great. Where's the mindset heading in that I know I'm not going to ask what's the goal because everybody knows it's a championship, I guess. How much has everyone bought into that? Everyone's bought in. Everyone you know, is listening to Coach Plum, you know, listening to what he has to say, listening to Carl English, you know, listening to me, like listening to all the vets. They're all bought in because they eventually they want to play on a high level. They want to play in Italy. They want to play in Greece. Like they want to play in the Euro League and top league. So like for them to take our advice and soak it in, it's, a, it's an honor. A lot of big names on this team, Carl English, yourself. Glenn Davis, Satnam, doesn't sound like any big egos, though. Am I right in saying that? No, you're right. Like, you know, in order to win a championship, you can't have egos because if you have egos, there could be, you know, internal fights, you know, ups and downs and stuff like that. So everyone's bought in, everyone's level-headed, and, you know, we're just willing to work and learn from each other, even the young guys, you know? So it's, it's like I said, man, it, this it's a great opportunity for us to make history in in a town where, you know, basketball is is not really the thing. But now, like, the fans are coming out supporting us. Like, we have the greatest fan base in, in the nation. So, you know, for us to win a championship in St. John, where they never even thought about basketball, would be a real big deal. Speaking to that fan base, I mean, going from on the road to some of the attendance at their away games and that, to what you have at home here, what's that comparison? I mean, there's no comparison right now, you know. We're, we're setting the bar here in St. John's and, you know, hopefully the other teams and stuff, you know, follow follow through. Because when the teams come here, they're, like, amazed. Like, they can't believe, like, like how much support we have here. You know, I'm even shocked. Like, I thought it was just going to be, like, NBL or whatever. But this is, like, I'm playing in a college atmosphere in, in the pros so in Canada. So, like, it's it's awesome, man. I thank the fans for that. Anything else about being on the team here and and I guess your career that maybe I didn't touch on that you want to bring a bit light to here? Um, man, I'm just, I'm just, it's an honor to be here, man. The people are so nice. Like everyone is generally, they like generally love us as players, you know, us giving back to the community, you know, just everything in general, like general, like I never thought that I would ever be in Newfoundland, you know, and like I could actually like say that I could actually live here because the people are so nice and genuine. So, you know, I'm happy to be here. All the guys are happy to be here. We're, we're happy to be in this organization. It's top notch. And like I said, hopefully the other organizations follow through and, you know, try to be as top as us. Thanks for listening to the Edge Insider Podcast.